Hi, I'm Tyler Foss. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below and go and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Minute Earth video called What If We Replaced Nuclear With Potatoes? Sounds silly. Let's take a look. This is a potato, and it's on fire because, well, you'll see soon enough. I'm Cameron, and this is Minute Earth. Lots of stuff we use every day requires energy, and oftentimes that energy comes from things we call fuels, which are substances we burn to extract their energy. But because fuel comes in so many different forms, and we measure energy use in so many ways, it's really hard to get a good sense of how much energy we actually use. So to cook up a clearer picture, let's mash up all of these fuels by converting them to the same simple unit, potatoes. <laughs> so it looks like they're converting all units of energy in addition to electricity, looks like fuels for cars, firewood. I like that. We can do this, because a potato is a fuel too, you know, the kind your body burns for energy. This potato happens to contain enough energy to power your body for about two hours. What if your car ran on potatoes? The average car's internal combustion engine would require 550 potatoes to operate for two hours. Cars are so potato hungry for a few reasons. First, they're really heavy, so their engines need lots of energy to push all that weight around. And second, their engines have lots of moving parts that create tons of friction. As a result, 80% of the taters in your tank get turned into heat, and only 20% actually push the car forward. I can't not think about that at the gas station. The human body is actually more efficient than that with potatoes. Don't quote me on this, but I think we're looking at the more up to like 50 to 60% efficiency. Let me know down in the comments if you know the answer to that. An electric car is much more efficient. It converts about 80% of the potato power in its battery to motion. But much of the electricity in that battery was probably generated by power plants that only managed to capture the energy from about 40% of the potatoes that they burn. 40% is actually pretty good for efficiency in most uh, thermal cycles. You're usually on the order of 30 to 35, 33-ish. With that taken into account, the electric car actually requires about 240 potatoes to run for two hours. But of course, the energy one person uses is small potatoes compared to some other energy consumers. In those same two hours, the Apple computer company burns through 3 million potatoes while the lights of the Las Vegas Strip swallow 3.5 million potatoes. But even those are nothing compared to whole industries like global shipping, which burns 4.2 billion potatoes worth of oil in two hours. When you add up all of the- I like this scale, this metric, it's fun. Energy humankind consumes, the potatoes pile up pretty fast. If we measured a year of humanity's energy use in potatoes, it would be enough to cover the entire state of Idaho in a meter and a half layer of spuds. Right now, 85% of- I thought I was going to say 85% of potatoes come from Idaho, the potato state. <laughs> That's funny. Potatoes come from fossil fuels, though, of course, thanks to the inefficiency of extracting energy from those fuels, about two-thirds of the fossil fuel potatoes we burn become useless heat. Another 13% of our energy potatoes come from renewable sources like solar panels, wind turbines, and hydroelectric dams. Nuclear power gives us the final 2% of our potatoes. Nuclear power has a similar efficiency to that of fossil fuels, but even then, from a pile of nuclear fuel pellets the size of- So nuclear fuel pellets are not green in fuel, uh, when they're in fuel, the uranium, uh, the uranium oxide pellets are actually black little things about the they look about like little pencil leads, if you will, and they're about the same size when they're all rolled up into uh, fuel assemblies. And natural uranium is actually looks like yellow cake, hence the term yellow cake uranium. No idea why the, where the green stuff's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> but we can capture the energy of roughly 350,000 tasty tubers. That's a lot of hot potatoes. This video is brought to you by Gates Venture. Interesting, the video doesn't really ask the question, answer the question, what if we replace um, nuclear with uh, potatoes?
potatoes. I guess it's more of a conversion uh, factor because it really got into a lot more about an energy conversion into um, potatoes, presumably how many calories are in a uh, potato. But it was a, it was a cool little uh, visualization exercise to use uh, potatoes for energy use. And it, it was referring to not just electricity, but all sources of energy. Otherwise, nuclear, nuclear is actually on the order, within the United States anyway, about 20% rather than 2%. But I believe they were referring to um, oil and gas energy you use for cars in addition to just your electric power grid. Be interesting if they did it the other way around. What if we replace potatoes with nuclear? You eat once and you never have to eat again based on how much energy you would get from a similarly sized amount of uh, <laughs> nuclear fuel. That was a fun video though. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.